Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. Now here in the United States, deer hunting season is coming up pretty soon. So a lot of people have contacted me asking me to do a presentation on my recommendations for best calibers to hunt deer. Well, we can't really do that for a few reasons. One of those is deer are hunted in a lot of different environments with a lot of different methods and in a lot of different jurisdictions where the rules will vary sometimes greatly on what types of firearms and ammunition you're allowed to use. So a generic list of recommendations might not be all that useful to a lot of people. There's also the problem that any time I've ever seen a top 10 list of best calibers to hunt deer, it brings out of the woodwork a lot of people that feel really slighted that their particular favorite obscure caliber like 257 Roberts or 7.65 Argentine Mauser didn't make the list. By the way, both of those can be good rounds to hunt deer with. But there's people that get downright hostile over the fact that 2535 or 9.3 by 74R didn't make somebody's top 10 list. But I'll tell you what I can do. I can show you not necessarily my top calibers, but what are my favorite guns for hunting deer. And keep in mind, these are in no way recommendations. These are just the guns that work best for me. Now to start with, I wanna show you some of the conditions under which I'm typically going to be hunting deer. What you're seeing right now is very typical of the environments in which I will hunt deer. Fairly thick underbrush, a lot of trees, in an environment like this, I will typically take shots that are 30 or 40 yards, and about 60 yards would be the farthest I would ever expect to shoot. This environment is also very typical of where I would hunt deer. You see the trees are a lot farther apart and the vegetation is a lot shorter, so shots of 150 yards or even 200 yards are possible. In an environment like the heavy brush I showed you, quite often the shot I take is going to need to be fast. And my go-to gun for that is this Marlin Model 1894 in caliber 44 Magnum. It's got a 20 inch barrel and a 10 plus 1 capacity and open sights. In that kind of environment, I can acquire a target and fire, especially a moving target, much better with open sights than I can with a scope. And in those types of shots, it's typically a five point process. I'll see or hear some movement, key in on it, confirm that it's a deer, confirm that the shot is legal and safe to take, aim, and then fire. And that process quite often needs to be done fast. Now behind me at some distance, 25, 30, 35 yards, I don't know how far, are some number of soda jugs. I don't know how many. I don't know this because the camera crew set them up while I wasn't looking. But I do know their various colors and that among them is one red one. So when I get a signal from the camera crew, I'm going to turn and hopefully shoot the red one. So let's see how this goes. Okay, ready. All right, not bad. Now let's try that again. So now we've got another red soda jug set up. I still don't know where. And let's try that drill again. Not bad. And like I say, sometimes that shot needs to be fast. A delay of even a couple of seconds can mean not being able to take the shot. However, not being able to fire the shot is always preferable to shooting something you didn't want to shoot. Now this 44 Magnum at close ranges can be very effective for deer, but it is a short range cartridge. And uh, we all know people who claim to have made 400 yard shots with their pea shooter or whatever, but for me, I feel really good out to about 100, maybe 125 yards with this rifle. So what about the more open environments where I might take a shot that's 100 or even 200 yards? Well, let me show you my go-to rifle for that. Now this is my main go-to hunting rifle. It's a Marlin model 444S in caliber 444 Marlin. And there's some peculiarities specific to this rifle. First, when you buy 444 Marlin ammunition, it's typically a 240 grain bullet that'll come out of a rifle like this at about 2200 feet per second. For deer hunting, I use my hand loads, which are a 240 grain hollow point, but I'm getting about 2400 feet per second, so it gives me just a little more range. You'll also notice this rifle has a scope on it. Well, anybody that knows me knows that I do not like scopes on hunting rifles. They don't help me shoot any better. The reason this rifle has a scope is because the previous owner took off the open sights and put a scope on. So I left it that way. 
You'll also see this as a sling. That's a big plus on hunting rifles. And some of you may recognize that this looks like an M60 machine gun sling. No, it is. Now the real benefit I get out of the 444 Marlin is that it can be devastatingly effective on deer. We've already done a presentation where I shot the meat target with this rifle, so I'm not going to repeat that here today. But the thing is, when you're hunting on small plots of private land, you need to get that deer disabled down on the ground before he can run over onto the next guy's private land. That always turns into a hassle. And the deer I shoot with this rifle very typically fall over right in their tracks. But that comes with a downside. When you're propelling a bullet of this weight at this velocity out of a rifle of this design, there's a lot of recoil. Let me show you what I mean. That's a lot of recoil. And it's right about now that I'm really happy this jacket has a padded shoulder. So a lot of recoil, yes, but also a lot of effect. Just for fun, let me go back ways and shoot some of these soda jugs. On those few occasions when I expect a genuinely long shot, this is my go-to rifle. It's a Ruger M77 in caliber 338 Winchester Magnum. And it's got a couple of features like this nice thumb hole stock, which is very comfortable for target shooting, but for rapid target acquisition it's a little tough to get the safety off and then get my thumb through that hole. It's got an adjustable 3 to 9 power scope and this really cool muzzle brake. And the reason I have features like this on this rifle is really because that's the way it came when I bought it. So let's shoot this at 300 yards and see how I do. Now when hunting deer, I probably won't have access to a nice shooting bench, but under the right conditions I will be able to make a prone shot. So that's how I'm going to shoot at this 300 yard target. And there's our results. Now you know I normally like to show the impacts as they occur, but today we had a problem in that when we set the camera and went back to 300, the camera quit working. But here's our results from 300 yards. You can see a little bit of the group opening up from left to right. That has partially to do with me, and partially because it's kind of a breezy day today, and that's blowing these bullets a little bit off center. But we can see for elevation I'm pretty good. And with this rifle, as long as I can get some kind of like prone or kneeling position, I feel really good shooting deer out to about 350 yards. Now is where I want to make honorable mention to shotguns in general. And the one I have is this Mossberg Model 500. It's 12 gauge with a 3 inch chamber and its capacity when loaded with 3 inch shells is 6 plus 1. Now that brings up the question about magazine restrictions while hunting with a shotgun. Well rules will change from state to state, but in the state that I live in, we have a rule that says when you're hunting with a shotgun it can only hold 3 rounds. However, that only applies to hunting game birds. If you're hunting non-game birds like rock doves, you know those pigeons that live under the overpass or in your barn and they're constantly carpet bombing you with their little pigeon bombs, for things like that your shotgun can hold as many rounds as you want. And because it only applies to game birds, when you're hunting deer with a shotgun there is no magazine restriction. Now that brings up the question, well what about an autoloader? Okay, again, in the state that I live in, there is no magazine restriction when it comes to your rifle and deer hunting, as long as it's a non-autoloader. You saw the 44 Magnum rifle I showed you earlier has a capacity of 10 plus 1. For auto-loading rifles, you're limited to a magazine capacity of 5. But that only applies to while you're hunting game animals like deer or elk or bear. If you're hunting non-game animals like jackrabbits or coyotes, you can put your 30-shot magazine in your AR and off you go. And because it only applies to auto-loading rifles. Again, while hunting deer with an auto-loading shotgun, there is no restriction on your magazine. So all that having been said, when hunting deer with a shotgun, it can really limit your range. And sometimes that's the point, and sometimes it's a really good idea. But you can extend that range by using slugs. Now I've got this shotgun loaded with Remington 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 ounce rifled slugs. And I'll go back 50 yards and I'll shoot our deer target here. Let's see what kind of group I can hold.
Well, this one shot's pretty low, but that's still touching what they consider the vital ring. That would probably be a deadly hit. The other four certainly so. And remember that's offhand at 50 yards with a smooth bore gun with no sight, just a bead. If you had the aftermarket barrel that's rifled and has sights on it, you could hold groups like this at well over 100 yards. Now when I'm using a shotgun for deer hunting, it's usually because I'm on an agricultural hunt. And the agricultural hunt I typically go on, and that I'll be going on this fall, because it's close to town, it prohibits the use of centerfire rifles. So you're allowed to use a shotgun, or archery equipment, or handgun, or muzzle-loading firearms. Now this is my Pedrasali Kodiak rifle in 72 caliber. And in the state I live in, when you go on an official black powder hunt, there's various rules that apply as far as what kind of guns you can use. And one of those rules is it can only have one shot. So I don't get to use my double-barreled rifle. And yes, this is a rifle. But for the agricultural hunt, it's okay. Now let me give you the abbreviated version of loading this. I've already put the powder in. So next I'll use a spit-lubed patch. And the one thing I do want to say about when you're loading a double-barreled rifle, when it comes to putting the powder in, you've got to remember which barrel you put the powder in. Now next I'll use my high-tech ball starter and get our patch for our other barrel. Yes, these patches do taste bad, but I've developed a taste for them. See how it bounces? That's what tells you it's completely seated. And then you'll apply the percussion caps. Now there's a school of thought that you shouldn't put the cap on until you see the game. I don't really agree with that. You've got to put the cap on before you actually see the deer. However, don't put the cap on until you're in a place where it's okay if the gun goes off. Because when you let these hammers down and you have to seat those caps, there's a slight chance that the gun will go off. Then put it on half cock for safety. Now that's the short version of loading guns like this. We do have a very long presentation on black powder guns and you can watch that for more detail. But for right now, let's just shoot the thing. Right now I've got this rifle loaded with my hunting load which is a 715 diameter round ball that weighs about 525 grains, backed up by 110 grains of 2F black powder. So, by muzzle-loading rifle standards, it's pretty powerful. One of the tricks of a double-barreled rifle is the very time-consuming, tedious process of regulating these barrels so they're both hit in the same place off one set of sights. Rather than going through that process, the people at Pedrasali gave us two rear sights, one sighted in for the right barrel, one is sighted in for the left barrel. And a big challenge in shooting these is remembering which sight goes with which barrel. So let's give it a try. Yeah, by black powder standards, pretty powerful. This gun is also quite accurate. I have won several black powder rendezvous shooting competitions with this gun. But rather than demonstrate the accuracy, I thought demonstrating the power would be more fun. Well, we've got the shot holes pasted up in our 300 yard target, and I want to show you one more gun. This is the Magnum Research BFR revolver. It's a single action revolver with a five shot cylinder and a 10 and a half inch barrel. This one's chambered in caliber 444 Marlin. I got it in this caliber to match the rifle. Now when you open the loading gate on this revolver, it freewheels the cylinder, but unlike a lot of single actions, this cylinder freewheels in both directions and that can make it a lot easier to reload. So I load in my 444 ammunition. Now these revolvers also come in calibers like 4570, 450 Marlin, 3030, and the list goes on. And the thing about this revolver is, despite its comic bookish appearance, once I get it in the holster, it's actually not as obtrusive as it would seem. It's really pretty easy to carry around. And when I'm in camp carrying my revolver and a few extra rounds on my belt, in case a deer happens to wander by camp, which does happen occasionally, I've got a gun with me. The other thing that this does is, on the agricultural hunt where centerfire rifles are prohibited, 
This is not prohibited. That's the rules. So I'll go back 50 yards, shoot our target, let's see what kind of group I can hold. And here's our 50 yard group. I've got one that's a little off, but that's a flyer, that's just me. But altogether, not a bad group. I think the farthest distance at which I've actually killed a deer with this revolver was right at 120 yards. Now, I was shooting from the kneeling when I shot this target, and that's my preferred shooting position for this gun. Even though it is a very high quality single action revolver, it has a surprisingly long trigger pull. But once I was able to get accustomed to it, fairly good groups are not too hard to get. So let's recap. And remember, these are just my favorites. They're in no way recommendations. So in thick brush, the Marlin Model 1894S and caliber 44 Magnum. When I need a longer and or more powerful shot, the Marlin Model 444S in caliber 444 Marlin. When I need a really long shot, the Ruger M77 in caliber 338 Win Mag. Now some people take exception to me hunting deer with a rifle like this. And they'll get bent out of shape and ask, why would you hunt deer with a 338 Win Mag? Well, the answer is pretty simple, because that's the rifle that I own. Would you believe that that is the only bolt-action rifle that I own? And the only reason I have that one is because the previous owner decided to upgrade to an auto-loading 338 Win Mag, so sold me that one for a really good price. But to get back on task, there's also the muzzle-loading, double-barreled Pedrasali Kodiak rifle in 72 caliber. Honorable mention to the shotgun. And rounding out the top five, the Magnum Research BFR. Now this revolver has a very long trigger pull for a single action revolver, and it's got so much recoil that it sometimes knocks the sights out of alignment. But other than that, I cannot say enough good things about this revolver. It's well designed, it's rugged, it's well put together, it's accurate. I can't say enough good things about this revolver. So there's my top five list. If yours is different, and I presume it is, I'd love to hear about it. And as always, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Top 5 Guns for Deer Hunting video.